Shalom and welcome to Parasha Espresso, the weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parasha. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. This week we'll be looking at Parasha Bayera, which runs from Genesis chapter 18 verse 1 to chapter 22 verse 24. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter or via our website. There was a knock on the door. It was evening and we certainly weren't expecting any guests. As I opened the door, I wondered who was going to be on the other side. If there's one thing that's important in the culture of the Middle East, it's hospitality. Welcoming traveling family members or even welcoming strangers is seen as virtuous and part of attending to people's basic needs. It shouldn't surprise us then to read in this week's parasha that Avraham Avinu, Abraham, welcomes three strangers to his humble tent. Sarah even cooks up a storm in record speed and serves the unexpected guests a tasty meal. Nothing unusual so far in this week's story, until we realize that the visitor is God himself. Abraham probably realized that something was out of the ordinary when God turns to him and tells him that Sarah is going to give birth to a son next year. Sarah, eavesdropping inside the tent, bursts out laughing at the thought that God's promise is actually going to come true. I don't blame her. I would have done the same. As if that wasn't enough, the guests have other news. God has decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, where Abraham's nephew Lot lives. Two of the men, who we learn are actually angels, head on down to get on with the dirty work, while God remains behind to talk to Abraham. A very unexpected visit indeed. As Abraham talks to God, we get a glimpse into another aspect of life in the Middle East, bartering. It's a custom I would be happy to introduce here to Europe the next time I want to buy a new guitar. Except that this bartering is not over a couple of euros here and there, but rather about people's lives. Put simply, Abraham doesn't want Lot, who lives in Sodom, to die. After all, he's his nephew, whom he loves. So rather than asking God to get Lot out, Abraham asks God to spare the cities on account of 50 hypothetical good people there. But wait a minute, what happens if the city is really as bad as God says it is? Perhaps there are only 45 good people, or 40, or 30, or 20, or only 10. Abraham finally settles on 10 as his plea and pleads that the judge of all the earth do what is just. God smiles and agrees, but what's going to happen to the people there? The scene switches and we now find ourselves in Sodom. This time it's Lot's turn to welcome the strange visitors. Except the hospitality isn't as good there because the men of the city try to force their way into his house to rape his guests. Staggeringly, this confirms that there aren't even 10 good people in the city and that God has actually sent the two angels to rescue Lot and his family before fire and brimstone rains down and consumes the cities. Lot and his family, minus his wife, make it safely to cover before the cities are wiped off the map. It's a tragic story really, but what follows is even worse. Finding no one to offer them the traditional hospitality that they so desperately need, Lot ends up with his daughters alone in a cave. His daughters assume that the destruction they saw was the onslaught of the apocalypse and make the wrong assumption that they are the only ones left alive. In a bizarre turn of events, they both sleep with their father and end up falling pregnant. If there's one thing the Bible doesn't hide, it's the failings of its protagonists. We don't learn anything more of what happens to Lot. Instead, we find ourselves back with Abraham several months later holding the child of promise Isaac in his arms. Sarah is not very hospitable to Hagar and Ishmael and sends them packing. And then King Abimelech is not very hospitable to Abraham and tries to steal his wife. Thankfully, God intervenes. This week's portion is a veritable roller coaster of the life of Abraham. But we're not through yet. God has one last test. Years have passed and everyone's a bit older now. God decides to test Abraham and tells him to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham, with incredible trust, doesn't even question God, but sets out to do what he's told. When God sees that Abraham really intends to kill his son of promise, he sends an angel to stop him and show him a substitute, 
a ram caught in a thicket at the top of the mountain. We wrap up the portion seeing that ultimately God has been the one to be very welcoming and hospitable to Abraham. But let's go back to the story I started to tell you at the beginning. As I opened the door, I saw a stranger. After talking for a while, I realized that William was a believer in Yeshua who had been traveling around the world, relying on the hospitality of others. Just like William and Abraham, you and I are strangers traveling through this world, relying on the hospitality of our fellow human beings, but also on the hospitality of God, that he will look out for us and care for us on our journey. Just like with Abraham, who trusted God despite every evidence to the contrary, we can choose to trust that God will look after us. God, in his hospitality, welcomes us into his home to be part of his family. He even offers us a substitute, just like he provided for Isaac. But there's a catch. We have to trust him. And we have to trust his Messiah, his son, Yeshua of Nazareth. Will you let him welcome you in as well? That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our Parasha Espresso. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youdenfearjesus.de.